All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kev. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is Sunday Site Visit 67. And today I will take you along with me to explore rarely seen areas of the Giza Plateau, including the remains of the final Pyramid Valley Temple and the Kenkawes Industrial Complex. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to the Land of Kim here on YouTube, and don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, share, and stay tuned if you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Check out the Land of Kem members only channel and thelandofkem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Kem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there in Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, Thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder, the second 2024 Land of Chem Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour is on and bookings are still available. If you are interested in coming to Egypt to see the pyramids for yourself, including special permission access to Abu Sir and a private entry into all three chambers of the Great Pyramid of Giza at night during this epic adventure experience coming up in early winter later this year. Please send me an email to contact at thelandofchem.com with the subject line Egypt Tour 3 and I will send you the full tour itinerary and pricing details. Thank you all so much and I will see you soon here in the Land of Chem. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. Now to begin, during today's expedition, we were fortunate enough to explore areas of the Giza Plateau that led to capturing some of the most breathtaking shots of the pyramids that I have ever seen, one of which you can see here, directly to the southeast of the Central Pyramid. And this one here, looking north, from the Mastaba of Ra where toward the Great Pyramid in the distance. Now, everything that you are about to see will be more thoroughly explained during next Thursday's research episode, including the Kent Kauwes Industrial Complex and these massive basins. For now, I will leave it at that. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy Sunday Site Visit 67, an investigation of forgotten areas of the Giza Plateau. All right, everyone, welcome back. Resuming our investigation here on the Giza Plateau. And we are gonna take a walk down around the bedrock here. leading around the southeastern corner of the central pyramid, as you can see rising up above this mound of bedrock here. And we looked at this house the last time that we were down here, but there's several anomalous features in this area that we wanted to document today. Look at this. This long rectangular cutout here. That's all been bricked up and covered over. More of these gated openings down here. And here's another 
sort of highly eroded valley. I can see a big chunk of iron oxide up here. And we're gonna try to just walk down around this area, and take advantage of some shade here, to see if we can access the area where we concluded the previous Sunday site visit, not the Iron Vein expedition, but the investigation of the calcite crystal gold processing industrial complex on the southeastern corner of the final pyramid. And we finished that episode by looking at this highly eroded valley leading down into the bedrock toward a series of structures here on the southeastern corner of the central pyramid. And it is blazing hot today, probably the hottest day whew, that I can even remember <laughs> coming up to the Giza Plateau. It's dead up here today because again, as I've said before, only people that are absolutely out of their mind would be out here in the desert today, but This is for you. Smoking the warped La Colmina again. So over the past several episodes, I've provided some pretty extensive documentation of the iron vein network branching across the Giza Plateau that was utilized to distribute electric currents from lightning strikes into various components of this chemical manufacturing and mining operation. And my wife Alexa is with me as always. <laughs> I don't know. She always likes to look into these shafts and So I have the Great Pyramid over there. This is a house that I've always questioned the position of this structure. And there's, there's all sorts. This whole piece right here is a big vein of iron here. I've always questioned the location of these structures that seem to be very strategically placed around the Giza Plateau. I mean, why you would cover up anything at an incredibly significant historical site is, is beyond me. You would think that would be against international archeological preservation regulations, but I will say it's, it's really nice here in the shade, <laughs> but we shall proceed. Lex. All right. She often disappears into nooks and crannies and then certainly don't want to lose the precious cargo on this expedition. All right. <clears throat> and we're going to stick close to this bedrock wall.
and there's shafts and things all down in this area. And they call these bedrock tombs. And it would be more unusual to walk around the plateau and not see these things. They're, they're all over the place. So now we're looking at the southeastern corner of the central pyramid. All right. All right, so this is what we were looking at. down into this enclosure here. A huge wall of bedrock here. So this is bedrock. And there's blocks above it here and around this side. Oh. See a little trace of an iron vein running down through here. Here's a big piece of this vein here. And my wife Alexa has been learning to read the hieroglyphs. This would be a good place for you to do it. So didn't let her decipher the hieroglyphs above this so-called rock cut tomb. You see there's some Pencil. I'm gonna sneak over here in the shade. <clears throat> I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's 44 Celsius today. So there's a huge enclosure here in this area. You see this a small wall here. Looking down this way, you can see the top of the Kent Cowes pyramid or monument or temple. And in the distance there is that huge rock outcrop known as Jebel Ghibli. All right, and this is what I wanted to see. So this is that huge eroded channel here, leading down into this area. That's just kind of a dead end into the bedrock there. Interesting. I was looking to see in here if there was any connection to the section above, but that also appears to be 
a bit of a dead end. Let me get another shot of that channel. And we'll, we'll get it from the top end here, but you can see this huge eroded channel in through here. And I'm just looking out here so you can get a really good view of several other structures of interest. The Mastaba of Ra Ware is down this way, which has an interesting internal chamber system that has been reported by my colleagues at the Asita Project to connect back up into the Great Pyramid. So basically what we've been doing over the past, well, I mean, it's been two years of intensive on-site expeditions to the Giza Plateau to assemble all of the information required to appropriately document the network of subterranean connections across the Giza Plateau. So we not only have connections in these underground shaft networks, but then we also have the circuitry of the Giza Plateau. These iron and conductive metal electric conduits for the distribution of electric current from these lightning strikes. And I have a massive episode coming up soon that will discuss the cumulonimbus lightning storm generation system here on the Giza Plateau. So this is a huge enclosure here. And it wraps around the remnants of a structure here in the center. I don't think that the enclosure itself is original. It looks to be restoration and just sort of a perimeter that was built around this structure here in the center. Interesting. We can get a look here. And there's a wooden platform here that goes down into the bedrock. There's always pits in these things that go down, but you can see several chamber housings, good acoustic properties in there. Yo, yo. All right, I'm gonna take five and get, I'm just dripping sweat. Man, I can even hear my echo standing out here. Yo! Not sure if the mic's gonna be able to pick that up, but. All right, I'll be back in a second. We'll take a look at all this. Take a few more pulls off this fantastic warped cigar. Again, the warped La Colmina. If anybody wants to pick some up, I have no affiliation whatsoever with these companies and I'm not trying to do advertising. I just really enjoy smoking cigars when we're doing pyramid investigations. As I say, cigars and pyramid research go hand in hand, dating back to the early 1900s. All right. So again, a great view of the southeastern corner of the Central Pyramid. And you can see this bedrock outcrop that we've been investigating here. Some super interesting structures back here. I 
There's a the false door stealer here. Almost walked right by it, but there's another huge vein of iron here. As you can see here. And it's extremely difficult to say what was originally inside of this enclosure. As you can see, it's all just kind of rubble now. There are some pretty, that was that, that there's a big, big fat vein going right through here. There's another one that runs through here and another one that comes down through here. <clears throat> so if we're looking at the evidence of an electric current distribution network, any structures that are in proximity to these veins would be directly connected into the network. Anytime you see me circle back, just know I'm looking for Lex. I always gotta. Man, I'm telling you today, whew, it is brutal out here. And this is a whole temple structure. Lex, check this out. See the entrance here that goes back into a there's a there's a whole structure here we'll try to get a good shot of this entire area from above <laughs> and this is why my tour is in the winter because it would be unbearable spending an entire day we usually come up to the Giza Plateau in the late afternoon so we can close down the park there's usually a lot less people up here in the late afternoon generally speaking this summer has been very very slow in terms of tourists and man, the wind feels so good right now. <sighs> Already down to the nub. <clears throat> Wish I had a roach clip. Bruh. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. All right, I'm gonna let Lex get caught up and then we will continue in this direction. <clears throat> and you can see Camp Cowes right here. 
the mastaba of Rawer. There's another mastaba here. I mean, this this whole area is filled with structures. Thankfully, I brought two cigars today. <clears throat> Beautiful out here. And we already have a great group that's coming for the tour. And if you're the adventurous type and you want the expedition of a lifetime, another prime opportunity coming up later this year. Send me an email to contact at thelandofchem.com, subject line Egypt two or three. And we'll have a full day out here exploring the Giza Plateau. Typically our Giza day starts, starts at nine and we'll go through the late afternoon. My wife, where are you? I'm getting photos of all the hieroglyphs so I can study them later. Did you get an interpretation of the glyphs in the rock cut tomb? Not yet. I didn't have a chance. I'm not going to put her on the spot, but. <laughs> She's done a pretty exceptional job learning hieroglyphs, learning to read hieroglyphs, learning the hieroglyphic language. She's also learning to play with the recorder. <laughs> I got a recital coming up. Yeah, so stay tuned for the, the Ancient Odyssey's recorder recital. For any of those of you that remember playing hot cross buns in middle school on the recorder. <laughs> the wake, wake up every morning and listen to hot cross, sand, sandstorm, yeah. <laughs> All right, one sec. You ready? Ready, yellow bina, let's go. <laughs> All right. So there's more. <clears throat> so you can see that there's a shaft up here. And Alexa got some good footage showing that there's transverse connections of these higher shafts. So these go back into the bedrock and then they branch off north and south. another <clears throat> okay. a big vein running down through there was also an area here you can see the remnants of
one goes down. probably go down into this little structure here. That is an awesome view. And I feel very, very proud and honored to be able to present areas of the Giza Plateau. Hey bud, it's okay. It's okay. To present areas of the Giza Plateau that most people never get to see. what lies beyond the locked doors. So this is the access into the subterranean chambers below this mastaba here. There's another huge one here. All right, so we're gonna keep on going in this direction and then we'll see if we can circle back. So I wanna get up into this area over here. So basically so far we've just traversed
there's more of these gated rock cut tombs And just a cavernous shaft leading down in this direction and then this way. More of these rock cut alcoves. Yo! Yo! That was just in here. And this is Kent Kawes right here, getting a little bit closer. going down into the structure. And this in front of us is the Mastaba of Ra Ware. opening here reminds me very much of the lintel and air intakes leading into the passage chamber mounds that we explored in Ireland which all have the exact same function just to funnel air into the structure <clears throat> huge 
piece of super melted looking iron sticking out there. All right, so we've reached the eastern side of the Mastaba of Rawer. And the team at the Asita project was able to get access inside of this structure. That's a cool shot right there. All right. <clears throat> And there's a specific area inside of Kent Cowways that I want to document today as it will be featured in the next Thursday research episode. Gotta say, this is one of my favorite areas of the Giza Plateau. You can see more veins of iron here coming from the top of the structure. This is all built on a huge mound of bedrock that is permeated with these iron veins down here. And I have this on the map. This little access here goes back around in that direction and up toward the top. But there's huge rock cut passages running through this area. And you can see right here, there's another huge vein of iron. running up to the top of this mound of bedrock. All right, so now, see a little depression here and when I walk to the other side of this wall we'll show you where this depression leads and unfortunately this is all filled with sand another one of the pyramid keepers it's okay bud he's hot see this precariously perched piece here that most likely fell off of here crazy stuff down in this area all right so this is the first basin that is associated with an area known as the Kent Cowes town. There is an entire area to the east of the Kent Cowes temple and monument that was a huge town, what I like to call an industrial processing and distribution area. And this is a pit that was documented to have two channels 
leading down into this pit. You can see one here and one here. And as I turn around, there's a huge eroded hole here that's been plugged with a granite block. This is a piece of gr red granite that we're looking at here. And there's, there's some modern concrete patchwork up here, some fill in. And this thing leads directly down into the pit. Flex. And just a quick announcement, new Land of Chem merch is now available. I just dropped the Nano Gold fifth degree logo on a black t-shirt and hoodie. And I'm very excited to present the new spectacular white horse logo on a black hoodie and the premium high definition extra large white horse logo on this exceptional quality black t-shirt. And once again, Thank you so much to friend and supporter of the channel, Adam Arrington from New Zealand for collaborating with me on this new logo design. He has done some amazing work in helping me bring my ideas for the Land of Chem logos to life. And if you wanna check out more of his work, I'll put a link to his Instagram in the video description below. The Egyptian blue version of the Land of Chem book and the last 30 or so of the signed first edition purple orchid paper print are still available. So if you want to show some love, just check out thelandofchem.com and thank you all so much for the support. All right, and we're trying to make our way toward the Menkaura Valley Temple or whatever remains of it today. And here you can see this pit, this basin here. And leading down into this direction is all the remains of this Kent Cowes town. So here's the, the opening. And I've done full research episodes on Kent Cowways and the subterranean structure. And I can see there's a huge piece of iron oxide right here. terminating directly into the top of this area. And it looks like it actually runs down the wall here, from here. All right. Here's the modern cemetery, Jebel Ghibli.
So the final pyramid is here. The causeway leads down in this direction. And you can see some huge pieces here of red granite. Down in this area somewhere are the remains of the final pyramid Eastern Temple. It's a pretty massive depression here cemetery and the rock outcrop Jebel Ghibli And whatever was down here is now completely buried. Or I don't want to say completely destroyed because there is some documentation from the original excavations that show the configuration of this temple. But there is nothing down here. buried under here most likely. All right. But this does give us a good opportunity to get a good look at this rock outcrop. And you can see these unusual protrusions. I have the very so strong suspicion that there was a structure up here originally on this rock outcrop. And I mentioned that when we had a exclusive escort to the wall of the crow. And all he said is, you're very smart. Somewhat acknowledging my suspicion that there may have been a structure on top of this bedrock outcrop very similar to the structure that's on top of the bedrock outcrop that we just saw at the pyramid or temple of Kankawes. And this area surrounded by the wall is the modern cemetery. The area with those sycamore trees that we discussed in a previous episode are mentioned 
on the inventory stila as the area that was struck by lightning. Also mentioned in that text is that the Sphinx itself may have also been struck and partially destroyed by a lightning strike. This thing has my utmost attention as there are deep shafts at the top of this structure that we were able to document in the wall of the Crow Sunday site visit. And I know Alexa is super excited about this. I am too. I didn't think that we'd be able to see all of this today. <laughs> now that is a shot of the Giza Plateau that you are not going to see anywhere else. Beautiful. Great Pyramid, Kankawes, Central Pyramid, Final Pyramid. And what we're looking at here, the remains of what was most likely the Valley Temple. As you can see, we are, let me take a few more steps. We're now directly aligned to the east of the final pyramid here. So the Valley Temple would have been somewhere in this area. Alabina. Sadiki, Mishai is Gamal, Shukran. Aslema. All right. And the area where we're currently headed is also documented in the archaeological excavations to be an area that features huge basins. So this area here is the Kentkawes town. Sadiki Isaac. Trying to stay out of the way of the camels and horses that ride through this way. Crazy shot. And for some orientation, we're going to end up here at the Valley Temple.
Ferreira! And I am pretty jazzed to be able to get documentation of this area. I mean, the guards today have been super nice. So this depression here, I believe is one of the basins. And I'll show you in next week's episode, all of the pictures from the archeological excavations of this sector of the Giza Plateau. She's pumped. This is awesome. Yeah, it's been a really, really cool day. We covered some serious ground. Really cool day. Wow. Yeah, some perspective that you just aren't going to see anywhere else. And then. We have reached the Valley Temple here. So like Alexa said, we covered some major ground in today's episode. <clears throat> Specifically documenting the finale of the Giza Plateau manufacturing system. And this is a channel that runs all the way up the southern side of the causeway. Alexa's got some great shots and video documentation of that channel. So now, time to hydrate and get some food. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's Sunday site visit. And we'll see you on Thursday so that we can review all of the archaeological data from the excavations of the Kent Cowways town that show all of the basins that we just investigated on site today. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for your support. Masalema. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was Sunday Site Visit 67 from the Giza Plateau Industrial Complex. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and in the next episode in the series, I will present all of the relevant research to explain the areas that you saw today. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing physics and chemistry and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, please subscribe to the Land of Kevin here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell, like, comment, stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only channel for exclusive research and unreleased footage and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats for all you cat lovers out there and Egypt Eats for Food Reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, Thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you. Next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. 
and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.